A majority of our water use occurs outdoors in our landscapes, especially in the summertime when water use increases. And all that water use is managed by one device, your irrigation controller. Once you understand the basic steps to set your controller, you'll see a healthier landscape. You'll also comply with the SMWA's seasonal watering restrictions, which are an important component to water conservation. Irrigation controllers come in all shapes and sizes, but most are user-friendly. Most controllers are located in the garage or side of the house. If you're installing a new controller, put it in an area that's well-lit and easy for you to get to. Experts from the Water Authority say there are five settings common to every irrigation controller that you need to know. Date and time, watering days, watering start times, watering run or cycle times, and programs. Most controllers will display each of the five essential settings you'll need to water wisely. Use a plus or minus or arrow keys to adjust those settings upward or downward, or even to add or take away watering days. You may also see a button that says next. This will allow you to toggle to the next feature you want to set. It's usually intuitive once you get started. The second essential setting is the days of the week function. Your controller may display this as set days to water or watering days. Whatever the wording, the goal is the same, telling your controller which days of the week you want it to water. Most controllers will display the name of the day. Some will convert a day to a number. For example, Sunday equals one, Monday equals two, and so on. Make sure you set your watering days according to the days assigned to your watering group. You'll readjust this setting each season. Go through each day of the week until you have all your watering days either turned off or on. The third essential setting on your irrigation controller is the start time. With this setting, you're telling the clock when or what times of the day you want to water. Once you've set your start times, you'll only need to adjust these about twice a year. For warmer months, generally March through October, set your start times for early morning and water before sunrise. This minimizes water loss to evaporation and wind. In cooler months, roughly November through February, set your start times for mid to late morning to reduce icing on sidewalks. The fourth essential setting is run time. You've already told your controller what days to water and what times of the day to water. Now, tell it how many minutes to water each time it's set to turn on. Move your dial to select your run time. This also may be called your valve run time, station run time, or simply station time. Adjust the minutes to set how long you want each station to run. The Water Authority recommends three sprinkler cycles of four minutes each, spread over several hours, to give fescue lawns the water they need when they need it. For drip irrigation, you can get by with a single cycle that runs anywhere between 15 and 60 minutes, depending on the plant type and the volume of water your drip emitters release. The fifth essential setting on your irrigation controller is program option. This is important if your landscape contains both lawn watered by sprinklers and plants watered by drip irrigation. If you have both, set your sprinkler watering to run from program A and drip watering to run from program B. Think of it as having two different controllers all in one unit. Set each program to meet different watering needs. If your landscape is watered by drip irrigation only, set program A as your only program. With both programs set, return to the on or run position. You're done. Now you'll need to adjust only two of the basic settings your station start times, and weekly watering days, according to seasonal mandatory watering restrictions or weather conditions.